to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as CA Reptiles and today is day three of Herpmas. So today we're going to be talking about how to have an environmentally friendly Christmas. This is a video I wanted to do for Herpmas last year but I just never got around to it so I wanted to make sure that I did this this year. So we're going to take a little break from all my little gift guides and we're going to talk about having an eco-friendly Christmas because we're starting to get into the time when everyone starts thinking about trees and decorating. So I want to make sure I get this video out pretty early in Hermes. So I thought about doing this video in different parts, like different videos. Um, but I think we're just going to put it all into one video. So I'll try to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. So this video is going to be in a couple different parts. We're going to talk about trees, lighting, gifts, wrapping, um, oh, and cards. So I will have the sections listed in the description below with the timestamp for each one. So if there's a certain section you're interested in um, listening to, you can go to that section. So we're going to jump right into it, starting off with trees. So I always hear people asking, you know, which is better for the environment? A real tree, where you're going to have to cut down the tree, you use it once and you get rid of it, or a fake tree where you go and buy it and you can use it year after year. The answer is a real tree. A real tree is more environmentally friendly than using a fake tree, despite the fact that you use a real tree one time and a fake tree multiple times. Here's why. Real trees are grown and produced and sold locally, for the most part. It depends on where you live, but for the most part, pretty much everywhere, you buy your Christmas tree, your live Christmas trees locally. So you're not destroying the environment. They're grown with the purpose of being cut down for Christmas trees and sold. You're supporting a local farmer or local tree business. So you're supporting a local business. Um, while they are growing, they are helping with air quality. So they're doing what trees do best while they're in production. And because they're grown locally, you're getting rid of a lot of air pollution and transportation costs. They're also a renewable resource. About 90% of trees that are thrown out each year are broken down and made into mulch that is then reused and repurposed. Fake trees, on the other hand, yes, you use them a bunch of years, but before you even get that tree, it has to be made. So it's going through production, which is contributing to air pollution. It has to be shipped to different stores. So there's the transportation costs and effects on air pollution. Um, and then use it a couple years, but usually people will end up throwing them away and buying a new one when they start dropping those little needles, little plastic needles, um, when they start looking not quite as full and fluffy and fabulous as they once did, they'll get rid of them and buy a new one. And these trees, because they're made of plastic and whatnot, when they're thrown away, they go and they sit in a landfill for pretty much ever. So since we just talked about trees, let's talk about what goes on the trees. So let's talk about our lights. So inside and outside, there's a couple things you can do to make your lights a little more environmentally friendly this year. So inside your house, I recommend using LEDs. Most lights you buy now are LEDs. Most people are using LEDs, which is really good. LEDs are much better for the environment. They are much more cost effective for you. I think the stats I saw were that were like a strand of LEDs ended up coming to like 18 cents versus old-fashioned bigger Christmas lights ended up coming to $20 so 18 cents versus $20 they're much more cost efficient that's because they're using a lot less electricity than those old-fashioned bigger reptile or reptile lights you can tell this is a reptile channel but anyway those bigger um, Christmas lights the old-fashioned Christmas lights that are bigger go LED as for outside, there's a couple options. There are, um, you can go with a longer strand with less lights versus a short strand with the same amount of light. So like, for example, there are lights that are like 40 feet long with 100 lights or eight foot long with 100 lights. You go for the 40 foot one, you're covering more area and using less electricity at the same time because it's the same amount of lights. Another option is the solar lights. I actually haven't used these yet, but I'm about to. We went out and bought a whole bunch for the nature center. So they come with a solar panel and they're sitting out there all day and then they glow at night. 
So I'm really excited to use them and see how they work. Um, we don't have very many outlet options at the Nature Center outside. So, and I, me and my coworker really want to decorate. So we bought solar lights so that we can just stick them in all the trees. Another option for outside is downsizing your light display. I know a lot of people, me included, love to drive around and see all the lights, see the people decking out their houses for the holiday. It's so much fun to just drive around and look, but just toning it down a little bit will save you electricity, will save you some money, and will end up being a little more environmentally cautious. Now for overall, for lights, to save on electricity and to help save the planet, if you turn off lights at night when you're ready to go to bed, that will save you some money and help save some electricity. Turn them on while you're awake, turn them off while you're sleeping and not getting to enjoy them anyway. My family, we turn off all our lights when we go to bed. The only time that we leave them on all night is Christmas Eve, just because it's very festive. We don't need to do it all month long. Just Christmas Eve, we leave the tree lights on. I don't know about my siblings, I'm sure they do, but myself, I leave my lights on Christmas Eve in my room. Um, the only ones I usually end up turning off are like my Christmas tree back here because it's very bright. I wouldn't be able to sleep with it on. And usually I'll wake up in the middle of the light or in the middle of the night and end up shutting off my other lights because they end up just being so bright. But initially I do leave them on just because it's like Christmas Eve, Santa's coming, Christmas is tomorrow, you know, all the good feels, all the vibes, the Christmas vibes. So yeah, but just shutting them off before you go to bed. It's a good way to go. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about cards. A lot of people this time of year will send Christmas cards. So we're going to talk about that and then gifts because sending Christmas cards usually comes before gift giving on Christmas Day. So Christmas cards. Make them yourself. That's really the best thing to do. Not only is it more personal and it just gives you a little fun like family activity, um, but you're not going out and buying cards that have been produced in factories and sold by big box stores. It's just a lot better for you to make them yourself. I mean, you can reuse paper, um, you can reuse drawings from your kids, you can have them draw cards and send them out. Some people I've seen have taken like magazines and used pictures from magazines and made like collages. So you can get really creative and create some really awesome things. So I did look up some stats online and I found that the amount of Christmas cards that are bought each year could fill a football field that goes 10 stories high. That is a lot of cards that are bought each year. And if you wanna guess how many trees it takes to cut that down, I'm gonna give you like five seconds right now to leave a comment guessing how many trees it takes to make enough Christmas cards to fill a football field that goes 10 stories high into the sky. Okay, if you guessed around 300,000 trees, you would be correct. It takes about 300,000 trees being cut down each year for people to be able to send Christmas cards, to go out and buy Christmas cards to send to people. So, save a tree, make your own. Okay, so now the part most people are probably waiting for, how do we be more environmentally cautious when we're giving gifts? So we'll talk about gifts first and then we'll talk about wrapping. So, the gifts itself. I know a lot of people like to unwrap things on Christmas. It's a lot of fun to go downstairs and see all the presents under the tree. But, gifts don't have to be store bought. And everyone's like, you need something to unwrap. They don't have to be store bought. There's a lot of things you can gift people that they will love, but isn't an object or an item. You can gift experiences, you can gift services. So just for some examples, you can gift somebody a massage. I did that for my mom a couple years ago. There's a massage therapist in town that I used to go to because I have nerve issues in my neck. So I'd see her in high school and I really loved going. So a couple years ago for Christmas, I got my mom a certificate to go get a half hour massage done. So that's really awesome. You can gift music lessons, um, dog walking, free tutoring, um, 
I don't know, maybe you are a really good painter and you can offer paint lessons. If you're a photographer, you can off you can gift people photography packages, like a pack, not even like a deal. It's like, hey, I will shoot a I'll do a photo shoot with you and your family for free for Christmas. Like, here's your Christmas gift. You get one family session type of deal. So, see where I'm going with this? It doesn't have to be objects. I mean, you can still wrap something. You can still make a little certificate and wrap it up. So, I still have something to unwrap. But then they don't have just a physical object that was made in a factory or used plastic or whatnot. It's something that they can go and enjoy. So for me personally, if someone wanted to gift me a trip to go snorkel with whale sharks, I would never need another physical gift in my life. I would be totally content and set. My life would be complete. And just another idea, tickets. Concert, a show, a dinner, tickets. Make a great gift. We usually every year for Christmas give my grandparents tickets to a show and dinner um, because they go to Florida for the winter. So we'll usually pay for dinner and tickets to a show. Okay, so moving on with the gifts, another idea. Um, and you hear this a lot, especially this year with COVID and everything. I've been seeing a lot more people trying to support small businesses, which I think is really awesome especially coming from a small business owner. I think that's so amazing. And this year I did try to shop mainly or only small businesses. And I think I was pretty successful. I might have gotten like one or two things from a bigger store, um, like Marshalls or Home Goods or TJ Maxx or something, if I was just walking through and saw something. But for the most part, I shopped on Etsy. Um, there's a lot of zookeepers that have their own businesses, their side businesses, so I shopped from them. So supporting small businesses cuts back on a lot of production issues that come from factory make, making things in factories. So air pollution and waste and just lots of plastic and whatnot that comes with things being made in a factory and then having to be transported to stores. And usually the things we buy are made in other countries. So they're made there, have to ship here, then go to other stores. It's just really not a good environmentally efficient, protective, I don't know how I want to describe this, process. Where you support locally, you're supporting some individual artisan or artist and you're helping their family. You're getting a really personally made item. Usually someone that owns a small business, their items have some sort of significance behind them, a story, a purpose, a meaning. So for me, my business is targeted towards reptile moms. I make decor and gifts for reptile moms. I'm starting to spread a little more so it's more reptile keepers as opposed to just reptile moms. But my target audience is still reptile moms and that's because that is something very near and dear to my heart as a reptile mom. I go to stores and I see dog mom, cat mom, all this stuff. There's never anything for us. So that's why I made this shop. So that reptile moms could have those things that they could decorate their home with and make their home feel more reptile related. Like all the dog moms and cat moms get to do. Things are also made locally, so just like we talked about with the Christmas trees, they're made locally so there's less production waste, which is kind of what I already said, but I'll say it again. Okay, another gift idea is giving used items. Everyone thinks presents have to be new and shiny, and they don't. They can be used items. One of my favorite gifts I got for Christmas when I was little was this humongous box. It was as tall as I was because I was probably like five years old, and it was a box of full of all of my mom's old Barbie stuff from when she was little. I loved Barbies growing up. That was like my main toy was Barbie. I loved Barbies. So when I got all of her old Barbies for Christmas, I was ecstatic because here was this ginormous box as big as me, just full of Barbies, Barbie clothes, horses, all of this Barbie stuff. And it was super cool because it was all of my mom's old stuff. So it had a lot of like emotional attachment behind it I guess so it was just super cool so giving used is totally totally okay it doesn't have to be something new and shiny I've given my sister some of my old things for Christmas before um, trying to remember what I think last year or the year before I used to have this really 
awesome peace sign table. When I was younger, I was all into peace signs. So in my old room, I had this little peace sign like coffee table and my sister really liked it. So when I moved home temporarily, two years, two Christmases ago, it was two Christmases ago, um, you know, when I was just starting to get all my reptiles really and I needed room for their enclosures and for my shelving unit because that was the year I got my big shelving unit. I needed to make room in my room. So I decided that's one of the things that could go, you know, I've kind of outgrown peace signs. It's purple. I'm not really a purple person. So I gave it to her for Christmas and she loved it and I think she still has it in her room. So giving used is totally okay. You're not having to spend money. You're not having to go out and buy something new or shop from like big box stores. So good. Okay, homemade items. Same concept as buying local, uh, but homemade is coming personally from you. So it means a lot. It's not just something you went out and bought. It's something you made thinking of them. It saves you some money, saves you on shipping, and yeah. So handmade items are always super awesome. I do that sometimes since I have my shop and I make signs and I make um, decorative, like I do coffee mugs. Wow. Sometimes I do water bottles, car decals. I can sometimes just make people gifts. Um, I've got my illustration business as well. I do digital illustrations. So this year I did a lot of digital illustrations as gifts because it costs me nothing. I just have to spend like five or six hours sitting with my iPad doing the illustrations and then I'll have them printed which usually will be anywhere from like a couple dollars to fifteen dollars depending on what I'm doing with the image and what I'm printing it on. But then it's a really personal gift. So next one is battery free gifts. Batteries are a nightmare for the environment. They are toxic solid waste. You can't really do much once they're out there in the landfills or out there wherever batteries go there's really no good way to get rid of them that is helpful for the environment. So trying to avoid gifts that involve batteries is really good. If you really want to give a gift that involves batteries, I recommend getting rechargeable batteries because then you don't have to dispose of them, but you can just keep reusing them. And the last gift idea is gifts from recycled materials. So there's a lot of eco-conscious companies nowadays that make things from recycled materials. For example, Waterlust and Siavi. Those are two companies near and dear to my heart that I absolutely love that make athletic wear that are made from recycled materials. So I think both of them are made from recycled plastic, like single-use plastic that's then turned into fabric and they make their clothing from it. Super awesome company, great mission. I love that they're thinking about the environment when they're making their products. They're thinking, how can we make these products as environmentally friendly as possible so we're not having a bad impact on the environment? And there's a lot of items nowadays that are made from recycled materials. Even if you go to big box stores, even if you shop at TJ Maxx, JCPenney's, Home Goods, all those places, there's a lot of items now that will say on them, made from recycled materials and so that's a good way to go. Another idea is to shop from businesses that have an environmentally friendly impact on the environment besides recycled materials. Um, there are lots of companies that give back to things. They'll give back to areas that may not be very well off financially. They might give back to conservation efforts. They might give back to different facilities. So those are really great ways to shop. A lot of the places I bought from this year donate to animal conservation. So I feel really good about all the things I bought this year. So yeah. Okay, so we're going to end this video talking about how to wrap your presents so that they are environmentally friendly. So obviously the number one thing people use, wrapping paper. I'm not going to tell you not to use wrapping paper. I use wrapping paper, but there are ways to use wrapping paper that are keeping the environment in mind. And so the main, main, main thing that I suggest is to avoid metallic, foil, sparkly, that kind of wrapping paper because it is much harder to recycle and sometimes not really recyclable at all. Stick to just the paper, wrapping paper that isn't shiny because that can be recycled. So every year on Christmas Day, we have 
our garbage bin, we have our recycling bin. When we unwrap presents, that paper goes right into the recycling bin. As long as it's not shiny. I think last year was the first year we really didn't have any shiny wrapping paper because I was talking to my mom about it and I was like, you know, shiny wrapping paper is not recyclable. If we're going to buy wrapping paper, we should try to avoid that. And we did. I don't think we had really much. I think the only shiny wrapping paper we used was paper we had already had. Um, we don't go out and buy new wrapping paper every, every, every year. We have a lot that we reuse every year. Um, that we buy and we don't use it all so we have it for a couple more years or at least the next year So it was like wrapping paper from like the previous year or the year before so we'd have to use it anyway um, But any wrapping paper we bought last year wasn't shiny. It was just paper paper that we could recycle after Kind of going after that is reusing so if you are wrapping a really big gift That means you have really big pieces of wrapping paper so as long as they're not like super crumpled when you're done unwrapping save that paper and reuse it. We have a section of our craft room that's just little scrap pieces of wrapping paper. So any of the little pieces from when you're cutting originally that you know you're not using right then, there's little scraps, we'll put them there. When we're reusing wrapping paper, if we have big pieces, you know, we'll cut them down and put them down there. So you can reuse wrapping paper. You can also reuse ribbons and bows. So we do that every year as well. We have a designated bow and ribbon bag. So bows, ribbons, and gift tags. We reuse gift tags every year. We've done it so many years now that every person in my family has a Ziploc baggie with gift tags in it. So every year we'll go in and I'll be like, okay, I'm wrapping a present for my brother. Let me go to Logan's bag and find the tag that says to Logan from Zoe, slap it on there. That we're not having to keep rebuying tags and we're just reusing them every year. Same with bows and ribbons, we put them in that bag. After Christmas is all done, we take it down to the craft room and we distribute them back into their location. So we have a bow drawer, we have a ribbon drawer, and we just put them away. It saves on money in the long run and you're reusing the materials instead of throwing them away to be sent to a landfill. Okay, two more gift wrapping tips. Next one is to use less tape. So obviously tape is not recyclable, so use less of it. You don't need to completely cover the whole crease in tape to make it as hard for them to get into the present as possible. Fold it, take a little piece of tape, slap it on there just so it holds, you're good to go. And last but not least, there are alternatives to wrapping paper should you so choose. I've seen a lot of Etsy shops lately that have reusable wrapping, so it's like fabric, but it's meant to be used for wrapping presents, so it's like really nice looking. Still Christmassy looking, I've seen a lot of animal related ones, I've almost bought some, but I know we have a lot of wrapping paper downstairs to use, and they're kind of expensive, but they're worth the money because you get to reuse them. But yeah, so should you so choose to use reusable wrapping materials. There's a ton of Etsy shops that have it. So if you just go to Etsy and search reusable wrapping paper, reusable wrapping materials, I guess, reusable wrapping fabric, reusable wrapping bags. I don't know to come. There's just some keywords right there. Um, you'll see lots of, lots of different options, not just for Christmas, like for anything. Ever. All right, so those are some ideas on how to be more environmentally cautious this year for Christmas. I hope some of this stuff gave you guys some ideas. Maybe you'll try something out this year. If you want to try to be a little more environmentally cautious this year for Christmas, leave me a comment below letting me know what it is you're going to be doing. And I can't wait to read all the comments. And we'll see you for Hurtmas Day 4. Bye.